Welcome to the Fierce As Fuck podcast. My name is Amanda King and I help women step out of the fear that is holding them back and into six-figure sales. This podcast will teach you how to grow your business organically without all of the bells and whistles. Yep, that's right. No websites, no sales funnels, none of that shit needed here. I grew my coaching business from $0 in sales to 100 k in three months, and now it's my mission to teach you to do the exact same thing. So let me ask you this. Are you ready for some epic shit? Hello, everybody. So I wanted to discuss on today's podcast episode, my book, because yes, I wrote a fucking book, (laughs) kind of crazy even to say out loud. And yesterday I received my printed copies that I ordered from the publisher. And it was a very surreal moment of just, it was kind of crazy. And it's all starting to actually feel real. And today is actually exactly two weeks until the book is published, which is on January 3rd of 2023. And right now you can pre-order the book basically on everywhere, which is also kind of crazy. Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, IndieMound. And I um, linked all of these links in the show notes so that you can purchase it or pre-order it on whatever platform you want to use. But I wanted to just dedicate an episode to the fucking book because it was a massive part of my life for the last two years. Yeah. I started writing this book in 20 fucking 20 during the pandemic. And so it is kind of crazy to see the evolution of the book because it's a completely different book than when I started writing it in October of 2020. It first initially started out as kind of like a, just a, I don't know, a life book, a book about like moments in my life that I was struggling with and that I was like trying to bust through all of these limiting beliefs. It was basically a life coaching book. And I uh, signed up with a coach, a mentor to help me polish the book, to make the book digestible, to make the book better, the best book it could be. And after reading the first draft of it, she basically was like, this book's way too fucking generic. This is way too generic. You're, you really don't hear your voice in this book. We can't just fucking publish a book that's all about like life hacks, I guess, or or limiting beliefs when you teach business. And at the time I was a business coach and I know a lot of you just started recently following me. And so you might not have known this because you follow me for my sexual empowerment content, but I've been a business coach in the online space since 2019. In 2019, I built my business, which I called Fierce as Fuck, um, from literally $0 in January of 2019. And I closed out the year with $211,000 and some change in total cash by the end of the year, not sales, total cash. So I was able to grow my business to multi six figures in 11 freaking months, which is absolutely insane. And it was a whirlwind of just absolute mayhem in the best way possible. And the reason I built this book, or I I wrote this book is a better way of saying it, is because the, so many people looked at me during this time and they said, how did you do it? How the fuck did you do it? Because at this time as well, I didn't have a website the first year of my business. I didn't have sales pages the first year of my business. I literally built this business to multi six figures using organic marketing, basically using Facebook um, by showing up on live video and speaking my truth about things that I was passionate about, about topics that really fueled my fucking soul. And before I knew it, I exploded like my whole business strategy. And I'm not ruining everything because this is literally in the introduction 
of the book discusses my leap to success. And it also discusses the fact that the book is a business book. Yes, but it's about so much more than business because I, I did nothing special. And I'm fully transparent with that. Like my strategy was this. I'm going to give you the secret sauce to my fucking strategy in 2019. Grab a pen if you need it. Uh, it was literally, I showed up on Facebook live videos for 365 days straight. Every day I showed up on live video on my personal page on Facebook for an entire year. Now, this wasn't the only live videos I was doing. I was also basically, when I would jump on a live video and I would talk, I would funnel people who found me on live video into a Facebook group, you know, the Facebook groups that we all have. And then once they were in the Facebook group, I would nurture them. I would just connect with them. I wasn't trying to sell to them. I was just trying to serve them and be there for them. And that simplistic is shit strategy launched my business into multi six figures in such a short amount of time. And even, honestly, it gave me the biggest case of fucking imposter syndrome when this happened. And I don't think I really talked about this often, or maybe I should have, but when my business blew up, I had so many people who were sitting here and saying, how did you do this? How did you do this? Tell me your strategy. Tell me your strategy. And so as a business coach, I'm like, okay, my clients would come to me. I literally would give them my strategy. Every fucking bit of it, whether it was one-on-one -on -one coaching or whether it was through my business program, it was called Badass Bitch Academy. It literally laid out the step-by-step -step process of how I grew my business. And there are two things about how I grew my business in 2019 that I didn't see. Like this is all hindsight 2020, right? Now that we're in what, 2022. Number one, the way I grew my business in 2019 was completely different than a lot of coaches out there. It basically what happened was, and like diving deep into my past, but in 2018, I had tried to run a network marketing business and I tried running my own, like kind of, it was called Pastry Chef Fit. It was like a health coaching business. And I literally couldn't sell a fucking thing. I couldn't sell a fucking thing. I couldn't do it. Even though I was following every single strategy that every single person on this planet was telling me to do, including my own business coach, who I had paid a shit ton of money to hire because she was a business strategist. She was the business strategist who helped network marketers and helped coaches. And she was fucking brilliant, man. She still is. She's still a coach. I love her deeply, truly. Like she helped me get everywhere. She was an amazing coach. And she had these super complex strategies in order to run my business or run how she was running her business. And I was like, holy fucking shit. I'm so overwhelmed with all of this. And so in 2018, every time I would try to launch something, I would become unbelievably overwhelmed because I would have to create the sales page, which I fucking hated. I had to create a website, which I fucking hated. I just wanted to show the fuck up, talk about something that really made me happy, really made me passionate and like go from there. And her strategy was so brilliant and it's so specifically amazing to her, but it wasn't working with me. And so in 2019, I was like, well, fuck this shit. <laughs> I had wasted all of 2018. I haven't made shit. I'm going to have to go back into pastry world because I was a pastry chef before this. I was like, I'm going to have to go back into corporate America if I don't fucking do this my way. If I don't stop trying to show up like my coach and start showing up like myself. So in 2019, I grew my business kind of going against every business, I don't know, rule or standard that our industry had at the time, right? Our industry was very focused on funneling our and sales pages and fucking Facebook ads, the amount of money some of these coaches were putting in Facebook ads. And I was broke as fuck. I couldn't put any money into these ads. I had no money. I didn't even know how to properly run the fucking ads. 
And so in 2019, I was like, fuck it. I am broke as fuck literally in December. And this is in the first like intro of the book as well. In December of 2018, I literally had no money in my bank account, not a fucking dollar. I laugh now. It was hella traumatic. I had never been, I I had never been so like, I don't know, just desperate. And I've never been so broke in my entire life. And it fucking sucked. And it was the worst month of my entire life and the best month at the same time, right? Hindsight during it was an absolute shit show. But it, when you hit rock bottom, the only way to go is up, right? And roll your eyes at that saying, because I just rolled my eyes even saying it, but it's the truth. When you hit rock bottom, there's nowhere else to go but up. And in 2019, I said, fuck it. I'm not going to listen to all of these business coaches, even mine, who I love dearly, but I'm not going to run my business her way. I need to run my business my way. And I need to do it super simple, super cost effective. Because once again, I was broke as fuck. And I need to do it now. I need to stop being so fucking scared of what other people are going to think and how, oh, well, Amanda's jumping from this to this. And I was like, I'm just going to fucking do it. And so I built my business in the most simplistic way. The most profitable way was my first, like I made so much, I was all that $211,000 was basically 95% profit because I didn't have a team. I didn't have overhead. I didn't have any of this. It was just me running a super simplistic strategy. It was crazy. It was awesome. And my business exploded. And so I built my business just basically being like, I'm going to run things my way. I'm going to listen to my gut. I'm going to listen to my intuition. And if my gut says go, I'm going to fucking run. I'm not just going to half add it, half ass it. I'm going to throw every amount of fucking energy I have in my fucking soul at this. And I did. And then the second thing I realized in 2019 was that the strategy I was given and the strategy I was doing and I was giving to my clients wasn't working for my clients. And I was like, what the fuck? Why isn't this working for my clients? This is working for me. It should be working for my clients. It's super simplistic. It's not like overcomplicated. Why isn't this fitting with my people? And I started to realize in that moment, it's because it was my fucking strategy. It wasn't theirs. The reason it worked so well for me was because it was authentic as fuck to me. It was something that I enjoyed doing. Not everyone can show up on a live video one time a day, minimum. At some days I was showing up on live video three to five times, depending if I was teaching my course because I was doing my courses live. If I was jumping in my Facebook group because I'd be on there live. Like I was on live video nonstop for a year fucking straight. And I loved every second of it. Don't get me wrong. There was nothing more energetically fueling than showing up on a live video and feeding off the energy of the people who were there with me. There was nothing more energetically appealing than connecting with my people at that level. There was nothing more energetically thrilling than showing up on a live video, not knowing what the fuck to say, because sometimes I didn't. But knowing I just had to show up and channel and like throw it up to the universe and expect her to give me something to talk about. And was every live video straight fire? Nope. There are a lot of shit live videos in that year. But what it did was it created consistency with my audience. They knew that I was going to show up every day, whether it was in the morning, in the afternoon or the evening, they knew I would show up. And so I built trust with my audience that way. And when I started having my clients repeat this strategy, it was working for like none of them. Why? Because a lot of them didn't like live video. And that's what I pushed. I pushed, showed up on live video, show up on live video. Because at the time, this is pre like TikTok days as well. And so at the time, it was the literal best way to get your face out there. A lot of people didn't like video. And I would still say, well, you got to show up on video. You got to show up on video. A lot of people were also not being able to show up as consistently as I was. A lot of people found my strategy overwhelming, even though it was simple, 
to me was super overwhelming to them. A lot of my clientele were moms and they were um, nine to fivers who were looking to start their own coaching business. And what I was asking of them was too fucking much. And so I started recognizing that like life, like I was basically feeding my clients the exact same thing my coach was feeding me in 2018. Oh, do this. It's going to give you results. And then I realized when they weren't getting the same results that I did, some of them got results, but just definitely not at the level I did. I started realizing it's not the strategy. It's the fact that it's not authentic to them. It is not this thing that lights them the fuck up. It is not this thing that gives them what I call the crotch tingles, right? Like I would get so turned on before getting on a live video. I could feel it everywhere from my head to my toes to my nipples, everything. Like it was such a thrilling fucking sexual experience putting myself out there in the best way. And I felt on fire and alive every time I did it. But that didn't apply to my clients, not every single one of them. Some of them hated live video. Some of them showing up on live video was like literal torture. And so I started realizing as I came out of business coaching and like went into 2020 when the pandemic hit and it was just a giant fucking shit show for everybody that business coaching isn't one size fits all. And then my strategy wasn't going to work for everybody. And when my mentor approached me, when she had my life coaching book, I think would be the best way to call it. And she said, you need to write a business book. I laughed in her fucking face. And I said, I'm not a one to write a business book. And she said, but why? Like you have a super successful business in like two years, you've hit $500,000 in cash. Like why wouldn't you want to write a business book? And I was I didn't feel like I had the expertise or the right to write a business book because a business book wasn't my fucking passion. A business book was just expected, I guess, from me. And I didn't want to do expected. I never want to do expected. But as I started writing this book, which I probably drove my book coach absolutely fucking crazy about it because I literally... (laughs) I fought her every step of the way against her norms. I'm an Aquarius. Don't, don't try to put me in a box. I will drive you fucking crazy. And I had to have driven her crazy because I put off this book every single time. The first, after she read my life coaching book and she was like, no, it needs to be about business. I wrote basically an entire other book about business, which she destroyed in the best way possible. And then I was like, why the fuck am I writing about business What I did has nothing to do with strategy. And even in the intro, I say, I know you open this book and you're expecting a business book. So let me give you my strategy within the first page. And I do. And I said, you can go try to repeat that strategy, but it's not going to work for you. It's not going to work for everybody. Why? Because it's not authentic to everybody. The biggest thing that I learned in 2019 was it had nothing to do with my strategy. It had everything to do with the fact that I was being audacious enough to listen to myself above all, to trust myself above all, to stick authentically to what felt good to me rather than what everyone else would do. And 2019 is the year in my business that I consider the golden year because I was on fire because everything made me feel good. 2020, I made more money and I felt more out of alignment than I had ever done. Because once I had hit that success, I then started to doubt myself and doubt the capabilities I had to duplicate that success, to hold that success. I had a bunch of coaches telling me I couldn't continue to run my business the way I was. I was going to burn out. I got all of this negative talk in 2020 was like me walking around in pitch black darkness, trying to find myself without a flashlight. It was a shit show. And I talk about it in the book too. 2019 was the golden era. 2020 was the year I completely fucking lost myself. And a good part of 2021 too. Because I stopped listening to myself. I stopped trusting that I had the knowledge and I stopped 
believing in myself and everything felt awry, even though I was making a bit more money, it didn't feel as energetically good. It felt okay, but I didn't feel on fire like I did in 2019. And so the book is a business book, yes, but the main themes are have the audacity to just trust your fucking self. Have the audacity to be authentic as fuck in this world. Have the audacity to say fuck it to what everyone else is going to tell you how you should live your life, run your business, express your sexuality, and listen to yourself. The book is, I think it's about 13 chapters. I don't even know how many chapters my book is. It's 13 chapters I'm looking at right now. And there's an intro and a conclusion. And these 13 chapters are what I call fuck it moments. And they are all moments in my business that I said, fuck it to what everyone else was doing and saying and participating in. And I listened to my gut and I went against the grain, even though everyone called me fucking crazy and all of the success that came from that. And it also tells times and it's a very transparent book where I didn't listen to myself and all of the fucking bullshit that came with that and how it really affected my business, affected my mental health, affected me as a person. If you've been following me recently, this business of mine took up all of my time and my soul and my energy. And in 2021, I became super burnt out because I wasn't listening to my own strategy. I was listening to everyone else and I was so fucking lost, which I discuss in the book as well. This book isn't just about my victories. This book is also about my trials, my turbulations and the obstacles that I've had to face and how often I fucked up all of the time because that is authenticity. That is being audacious as fuck to show the world that you are not perfect, that you do not belong on a pedestal, that you fuck up and you forget sometimes that you should speak your truth and you forget sometimes to stand tall and you run away from things instead of running towards them, that you let fear completely overwhelm you and overtake you rather than making it your bitch. The book is full of real life physics examples where I didn't know what the fuck to do. And when I knew what to do so much in my core that no one could stop me. And I know that if you're following me for sexual empowerment, you're probably not interested in this book because you may not own a business. You may not be an entrepreneur. And you're like, why do I need to read a business book? Because you should. Because the the examples I use are business examples. Yes. The book is geared towards millennial entrepreneurs who are struggling with their business because they're trying to run it everyone else's way rather than listening to themselves. But the overall arcing themes of every single chapter are and can be applied to everyday life. It goes through dealing with haters. It goes through dealing with shit sandwiches. It goes through saying fucking no. It goes through setting boundaries with the people around you. It goes through doing what you want and being authentic without the support you think that you need from everybody in your family. It is chapters dedicated to taking up space, to allowing yourself to be seen in this world all of which every single man, woman, and person struggle with every single fucking day of their life. Yes, it's a business book, but it is so much more than that. And as an Aquarius woman, once again, I hate being put in a box of a business book. It's a life book. It is a book that every single person, a child could read this minus the amount of swearing. There is a lot of swearing in this book. Surprise, surprise. But they could read this and they could recognize, holy shit, I can be my truest self and everything's going to be okay. And when I don't listen to myself, I get to see examples of how it will get so fucked up because it does. 
when we talk about sexual expression and feeling safe in your body, you cannot feel safe in your body and safe in your sexual expression if you cannot allow yourself to be seen, which is chapter two. You cannot love yourself and respect yourself if all you do is talk about how ugly you are and how fat you are and how many roles you have. And I do it myself too. I call myself, I say, I have a shelf belly. My husband rolls his eyes at me all the time. He gets so pissed. I call it a shelf belly because it just hangs there. We all do it, but we're not, we're not going to be able to express ourselves sexually in this world if we can't allow ourselves to see ourselves for how beautiful we are. We cannot sit here and express ourselves sexually if we do not allow ourselves the permission to take up space in this world. We cannot express ourselves sexually if we cannot sit there and say no to people and stand in our truth and set boundaries with people and be unafraid to clap back and be able to be protected and ready for haters, all of which is discussed in the book. This book is literally the most beautiful beginning point to someone who is looking to express themselves sexually in this world, but the idea of it scares the living fucking shit out of them. So use the examples that I give you about a business and ask yourself, how can I apply this to my sexuality? How can I take up space in my sexual expression and my confidence? How can I say no to people who are just using me, abusing me, who are being narcissists and who are taking up so much space energetically in my brain that I can't even feel like I can be myself? How do I show up and express myself in a world where I know that a lot of people won't support this form of expression because it's taboo or it's not deemed appropriate by society how do i do this without support all in the book having it be a business book is a great way to be able to take a step out of making it about sexuality and focusing on making it about just living your authentic life the business examples are a way to make it seem a little less personal because sometimes things are a little too personal and we're not ready to address them. So we need to see it in a different context in order to understand it a little bit better. And then for our brains to go, oh, well, she was talking about shit sandwiches and about the time that she booked this fucking in-person retreat in September in New Orleans and a hurricane hit the week before. That was a shit sandwich she wasn't expecting. That wasn't a, that was, that was an obstacle that could have thrown her through a loop. And I face this in my everyday life. Every time I try to change, evolve, every time I try to do better, I get hit with all of these shit sandwiches of all of these things going wrong in my life. All of these little tests by the universe trying to make me stronger. And I'm sitting here acting like it's making me weaker. And so I'm going to take the take action steps, right? There's every chapter has take fucking action steps that Amanda uses to apply to business. And I'm going to apply it to my everyday fucking life. I'm going to understand that when shit sandwiches hit, it's nothing about me. And this is part of the fucking process. Everyone expects the universe to hand them everything on a, on every manifest and every manifestation, every want, every desire in a pretty fucking pink box with a pretty fucking pink bow as a gift when typically it's like a Mack truck hits you and everything goes wrong. So I'm going to know because I read an audacious as fuck that this is part of the process. And I'm going to be able to move through this and I'm going to be able to accept this. And I'm going to be able to eat a buffet of shit fucking sandwiches at the worst time of your fucking life and be able to get through it. This is what life is about. This book is so much more than a business book. And it is a great book. It's, it's I got it. It's so funny. When I got it from the printer, I was like, it's so tiny. It's in, in my, my husband was like, yeah, but it's digestible. It's literally 140. No, not even. How many pages is this book? I don't even know. 125 pages. 
I can hold this book in one hand. It's tiny. It's beautiful. I'm holding it now in my hand, trying not to get emotional over it. Um, you could read this book in one day. You could read this book every single day for an entire month. And within two weeks, you're going to have the tools ready and willing and available to make the last two weeks of the month the best two weeks of your life to set yourself up for an amazing 2023 because this book gets published two days after the new year fucking talk about new me new you and I I or was it new year new me that's it I hate that fucking saying puts so much pressure on everyone what about new year better you new year reconnecting with you new year not taking shit from anybody you new year villain era you this book is everything it's me it's my heart my soul my vulnerability and I am not a vulnerable person once again Aquarius (laughs) it is beautiful and it belongs on the coffee table or a bookshelf of every single woman in this planet who has been told that they are too much and is getting so fucking sick and tired of believing that this book is a book that was written by someone who literally never felt like they could fit in who felt like they were the underdog in society, in business, and in life. This book was written by a woman who found herself through her business in order to find herself in her personal life and in her sexuality, because it was all a process. I didn't just step up one day in the online space and say, I'm going to talk about coming. (laughs) I'm going to talk about fucking, I'm going to talk about fucking, I'm going to talk about sex, I'm going to talk about blowjobs. I never, fucking 2019, if you would have told me this was going to be my life right now, I would have laughed right in your fucking face. I would have been like, you're crazy, get the fuck out. Like, not me, not me. But I wouldn't be here today talking about the these quote unquote taboo subjects if I didn't have the audacity to just be me, to live authentically, if I didn't have the audacity to trust myself with this fucking evolution of my brand, because this is so different than how my brand originally started. And the ironic thing is the book cover is actually my original brand covers, like my brand colors from 2019. Um, which kind of made it a full circle moment for me. And before you ask, it's not my bicep on the cover. So many people ask me that. Is that your bicep? No, it's not my bicep. I would never wear a polka dotted shirt, but it's beautiful. And it's, it's a book that can help so many people out there. And what I'm going to be doing in the month of January is if you order the book or you've already pre-ordered the book, there is a Facebook group now available. I'm going to link it in the show notes for anybody who has ordered the book. We are going to do kind of like a book club for the month of January. So I will be discussing the book itself. We'll be going into like the different chapters, what they mean to me, the inspiration behind them. We will have some live Q and A's in there. So you guys can jump up and ask me questions about the book and ask me questions about your everyday life. Uh, It's a month of a free pop-up group that gets you coaching in whatever area of life you need to be coached or you just need help with. I'm here to help. And so if you've ordered the book, or you're going to pre-order the book after listening to this episode, remember it's in the show notes. I'm going to put the group in the show notes as well. Make sure you join the group so that you get these added bonuses because I just want to show every single person who orders this book how fucking much it means to me that you guys are ordering this book, that you're putting your faith in me to help you in your business and your life and your sexuality. 
or whatever reason you have come to find me, I want to give back to you. So please, if you've pre-ordered the book, have your order number with you, because when you join the Facebook group, it is going to ask you for your order number. So have your order number with you. Sign up, for, not sign up, click the link in the show notes, go to the group, and I'm going to open the group on publishing day, which is January 3rd of 2023. So I'll start letting people into the group over the next few weeks, but we will officially kick off on the day that the book gets published. So make sure that you join the group for extra coaching to get to know me a little bit more, to ask questions about some of these chapters, because there could be things that I missed that you have questions on. And I'm always here to listen to perspective and feedback. And for those of you who don't know, I've always wanted to be an author. A little fun fact to end this podcast episode. <laughs> um, when I was younger, I was in like a probably fourth grade. I was introduced to R.L. Stein's Fear Street novels. I don't know if you guys know them. So R.L. Stein writes Goosebumps, but he had a young adult, like more geared towards women, um, fan, like book series. And they were called Fear Street, F-E-A-R Street. And I was obsessed with these books. Obs I owned over a hundred of them. My mom could not keep me out of Walden's bookstore. It was insane. And I remember reading them and thinking, God damn it. I always like, I want to be an author. I want to be an author. I want to write a book. And so at that stage in my life, I started writing short stories. They're short horror stories, which is hysterical. Because if you know me now, I can't watch horror movies. I'm scared shitless in my own shadow. It's bad. I'm that person who jumps over everything, we were watching Wednesday on Netflix the other day, and there was a time where a monster popped out. <laughs> I jumped and I screamed fuck so loud that it scared the shit out of everyone in my house. Like, I am just a jumpy fucking person. But I used to write these horror stories. And like a few of them actually got like published in like local little like elementary papers um, in New York because I used to write them for my creative writing and I always wanted to be an author. And then we lost our creative writing because of New York standard tests, which is a whole other thing for another day. Um, but this has literally been a, um, try not to get emotional. Hmm. Um, a dream of mine. Ooh, since I was fucking like 10. So it's kind of crazy and kind of surreal to even have a book in my hand with my name on it. So this is, this book isn't just for me. Ugh. This book is for every single person out there who had big dreams as a child and felt like they could never achieve them because society made them feel like they couldn't. This book is for every underdog and every misfit <laughs> um, and every person who never felt like they belonged because they didn't want to do what everyone else was telling them to do. This book is for every small town little girl <laughs> who thought that she would never get out and never be able to chase her dreams because everyone told her she couldn't. So this book is dedicated to all of you. And to me, because this is a huge full circle moment and it's beautiful. So thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget to check the show notes and uh, join the Facebook group so I can celebrate this with you in two weeks when it gets published. I love you all. I'll see you the next episode. You guys, thank you so fucking much for listening to the Fierce As Fuck podcast with me. Remember, the key to being successful in your business is taking the information you learn here and reworking it to fit your business and your style. The most important thing you do now is move your ass. Don't sit on this information. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Take messy, inspired action and watch your business take quantum leaps in such a short amount of time. Be sure to join my Facebook community, The Fiercest Fuck Tribe, to get involved in a community full of badass bitches who are taking massive leaps, not only in their lives, but in their business as well. Oh, and of course, don't forget to head over to iTunes and leave me a review. Until next time, my beautiful bitches.